And good afternoon and welcome to the After Nine show. My name is Sarah Quinlan and we have with me today one of my faves, Pastor Dave Fisonese. Um, and we just heard the message today from Pastors Brian and Karen Travail, and it was called Mended. Now it is March 24th, 2024, which I think is very fun. I was saying that earlier today, 2424. But I just can't believe that it's already almost the end of March. Yes. Right? Time um, has flown by. It, yep. So um, just a few things before we get into the nitty gritty of the day. Um, today is week three of our fast. So this is going to be the last week of our fast, and it's going to lead us right up into uh, Good Friday, which will be taking place. We're going to have a Good Friday service at 10 a.m. Uh, next like Friday that's coming up. And then Easter Sunday service is business as usual, 10 a.m. as well. So, Pastor Dave, we were talking today. Now, Pastors Brian and Karen, they've done Genesis for a long time. So everything they've been teaching us, especially today, has been like taught, like it's, it's their life message. Your evangelism, they are restoring relationships and overcoming addiction. Now, when they were talking about, um, uh, like they just touched on it really, really quickly, three things that get in the way of us when we let unforgiveness into our lives. And the one that says, it blocks intimacy with God, it blocks our prayer, and it blocks our happiness. And so when it comes to that with our lives, what are some pointers that you can do to, to be able to free yourself from that un unforgiveness? Or, you know, like they talked a little bit about it today, but when it comes to like approaching conflict res um, resolution, what are some steps? I know that we've got some biblical examples, but what would you do? Well, one of the things um, that I've always known, um, you know, I learned to, you know, and it's a little quote. Unforgiveness is like drinking a cup of poison and hoping the other person is going to die. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. I've heard that before. You know? And that's a good thought. Like, you know, like, unforgiveness is, is just something that, you know, it, it is, is very, very detrimental to yourself, to your spirit, to your life. Uh, it, become a, it can become a way of life where no one can get through to you because you have chosen to be a person of unforgiveness. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. Drop it like a hot potato and say, Father, <laughs> teach me to forgive. Yeah. I want to be a person that forgives, a person that mends things yeah. instead of a person who adds to the conflict. I don't want to be a conflict, you know, builder. I want to be a repairer, uh, yes. one who repairs. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's really good, Pastor Dave. You know, and, and I think they, they kind of touched, Pastor Brian said uh, something today that I thought was really good, that if you're full of... Jesus, if you're full of the Holy Spirit, if you're full of God, there's no room for anything else. You know, there's no room for offense. There's no room for bitterness and unforgiveness. You know, and, and that's something that I think that unforgiveness and bitterness, if you look at like when people have these big life issues, in my opinion, a lot of it boils down to that tiny little seed where there's something snuck in, a little root of offense or something, it snuck in and it overtook, right? It's like a little leaven leavens the whole loaf, right? Oh, that's a great quote. Thank great you. Quote. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's cool. And then they were talking a little bit, too, at the end. They said, you know, um, in light of forgiveness, you know, if, if I forgive them, then they're, they're set free. Then they're let off the hook without any justice. And then the truth is, no, like, we don't find justice in that. We find justice in, uh, or God is our vengeance and all that stuff, right? Yeah. So what do you think about that kind of subject? When people are scared to forgive because they don't want to let that person go off the hook. Well, it's because you've put your, yourself in the position of judge. Yeah. And, you know, you're also the, uh, a juror. You know, you're, you're the person here who is, you know, I can see better than they can see, and I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. And uh, for, uh, forgiveness is not going to help them. I need to unforgive them. But the bottom line is, the one that you're putting in prison when you don't forgive is yourself. Yeah. You're putting yourself into prison. You know. So you wanna, you wanna learn to forgive. Forgive produces life. Forgiveness produces life. Yeah. Unforgiveness produces death. You know. So. Father, teach me to forgive, you yeah. know, help me to forgive. Understanding that when Jesus died on the cross, the last thing he said was, Father, forgive them for they don't, right. don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, so, oh, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. It becomes a way of life for you, you know. So. Yeah. And it happens so quickly that you can develop forgiveness. 
and it happens very quickly that you can uh, uh, build up on unforgiveness. Yeah. And then one of the things that you need to understand is that forgiveness, practicing forgiveness, is an ongoing way of life. Mm -hmm. And you may have got today's situation okay, but that doesn't mean you're going to get tomorrow's. Yeah. Because they keep coming at you. So you just got to keep practicing forgiveness. And probably help me to resolve this issue. Yeah. And that's the way you deal with that. That's really good. You know, I, I had this conversation with my youth on Friday. We were talking about anger this last month. And I said, uh, okay, if someone, if someone does you wrong, do you seek out vengeance? Or how did I word it? Like, if you have an opportunity to take vengeance and no one will find out, will you go for it? And 90% of them are like, yeah, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I said, no, <laughs> that's not how we do things as Christians. You know, like, um, I think that honestly, like Jesus had the ultimate um, forgiveness, like you said, when the people that he loved, people that he came to die for, the people that he gave his whole life for is sitting there yelling, crucify him. Ugh. And then we say, you know, he says, forgive, forgive them. And then we say, God, I can't forgive this person. You don't know what they did to me. I said, yeah, but, you know, how much more was I, was I betrayed? How much more was I heartbroken? Was I devastated? And it's, you think about, like, you know, a, a, a father and a child, like, that love is something that, you know, people will never understand until they experience it. But for Christ to love us even more so, you know, it's just, it's beyond human comprehension. So to think about what Jesus was feeling at that time where the people that he loved with all of his heart were, you know, betraying him. And I always think about that. Like Jesus put himself in positions for us to be able to understand what it means to be heartbroken, what it means to be betrayed, right? It's like he experienced that for us so that he can say, I know, I know how you feel, you know? I'm kind of just talking in a tangent, not really getting any point across. But with the kids, I was saying how, no, guys, like we can't seek out vengeance. You know, like we need to be able to forgive people. And if we never find justice in things, it needs to be okay. Because it's not about people getting what they deserve. It's not about, you know, like what does God's Jesus says? Turn the other cheek, you know, seven times 70. It's all of that stuff. How much am I supposed to forgive my brother? And so I just, I think it's a hard concept for some people, especially teenagers, when they're like, well, yeah, if I can, if I can get vengeance and no one's going to know, then yeah, absolutely. But it's no, it's the heart of it, right? And I think well, that was really well talk, talked on uh, today. Did you have any other, like, pointers or, yeah, anything else you got for me? Um, you know, it always resorts back to our example. You know, our example is Jesus when it comes to forgiveness. Yeah. You know, and harboring, you know, I mean, if he could have harbored hard feelings towards the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of the day that were destroying people's lives and leading them astray, if he could have, if he could have harbored bad feelings, he could have harbored it towards them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And how about you know all, all the like you said, all the people that were supposed to be his friends saying, "Crucify him, crucify him." Yeah. Like you know, he he could have he could have went goofy as far as you know the, yeah. the the bad things that were said about him he could have if he had adopted them they could have destroyed him yeah. but he didn't he didn't accept them yeah he just said father forgive me because they don't they don't know what they're doing yeah. so he's always been our example always will always, be always yeah it's true you know and easter's coming up and i always get i always get not sentimental but i guess yeah kind of i always think about the cross and about leading up to that and and the Passover and all of these things. And, um, you know, I think it's important for us to do that as we come into this time. You know, this is a, a, a Friday and a Sunday that we separate and we acknowledge what Christ did for us uh, all, all of that day, like all of those years ago. But um, I think it's really exciting to be able to, to be able to fast in this time, but to be able to acknowledge what, what God has done for us. And, and the beauty of salvation that we have because of the cross. And remember, um, there were, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, you brought in this picture. Do you remember it, Pastor Dave? Where it was a carpenter and he had the nails and it was the nails on the, like in the carpenter. Uh, I can't remember, I'm butching it. But it was in a newspaper and he brought in this picture. But it showed like, he was, because Jesus was a carpenter first, right? And he was working and then there was a picture of the nails on the ground. But then the nails went to the cross as well. And so, um, I remember do you remember it? it? Yeah. I, I'm butchering it in my head, but it, it really stood out to me. And, you know, I, I have this song that I love and it, it talks about from, uh, from 
Bethlehem soil to Calvary Sequoia. And I love that representation just to know that, you know, he, he could have just been like, okay, everyone's saved, everyone's redeemed, done. But no, he came to earth, he did the hardest thing. You know, he was separate from his father. He was beaten, betrayed, bruised, you know, whipped for us. And to be able to stand here today with freedom and, and salvation and the hope of eternity is the, the greatest thing. And I think it's good for us to take this time this year just to ponder on that and, and just really be in awe of what, what Jesus has given us in this time of the year. Oh, yeah, it's just amazing what he did and what he, the example that he leaves us with. Yeah. I say here we are over 2,000 years since then and his example is still affecting. That's right. You know, you and I and millions of people throughout the world. Yeah. He's a great, great leader. He's a good man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, well, so if you um, are joining us in the fast, we're going to be doing some prayer times this week on top of the Lighthouse Prayer. So we'll be posting those on our socials throughout the week. Um, and then on Friday, we will be meeting for our Good Friday service, which I'll post all of that as well this week. So we hope you have the best Sunday of your life. And we'll be seeing you tomorrow at the Lighthouse. And just a reminder, if you have any youth and they want to come out on Good Friday, we are having a silent disco party at youth from 7 to 10 p.m. So if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to come. It's free of charge. And other than that, we, I'm Sarah. We have Pastor Dave Pistonese. We encourage you to light the passion within you and have the best day of your life. God bless you.